Do you like to have fun? Well, that's kind of a trick question because the essential feature of fun is that it's enjoyable and entertaining. If you didn't like having fun, it wouldn't be fun. But what is fun anyway, and why do we like having it? Well, you can think about true fun as the combination of three key elements, playfulness, flow, and connection. And from an evolutionary perspective, applying these three elements to learning movement skills was absolutely critical for our survival. So the overwhelmingly positive feeling of having fun is our brain's reward for engaging in activities that are good for our physical health, cognitive function, and social well-being. And this is not just for kids. Us adults can stand to benefit immensely from having more fun, especially when it comes to movement and balance. But if you've been out of touch with playful movement for years, it can really help to have a bit of guidance at first. Plus, picking a playmate to join you on the journey can make all the difference. <laughs> So all intelligent animals play and the more intelligent the animal, the more it tends to play. And if you think back to our evolutionary history, then that was actually a way for us to practice the skills that we needed to survive um, in a natural environment, but in a low stakes way first. So for example, we would be um, chasing each other around, playing tag or tiggy as a, a very obvious example of play. And we would do that before we would have to run away from a tiger or chase down a prey animal or something like that. Another example is wrestling with each other in a playful way before having to actually defend ourselves from a hostile tribe or something like that. The more we would play with these skills, the better we got at them and the more we could express that sort of mastery or that flow state where we're fully present in the moment, we're focused on the task at hand and we're feeling and performing our best. And playing with movements and connecting through play like that was actually also a very important way that we formed strong social bonds, which is another really critical aspect of survival, being a very social species. Um, a, a lot of our survival was based in safety in numbers. And so having strong social bonds with friends and siblings and partners and just the tribe in general was really key for survival. So you can see how, play and the experience of having fun is actually really tied to an evolutionary benefit um, and that's why it feels good to us to have fun and if you apply that to our modern context then you know it's still we still actually need play and we still desire play but we do just have to have an outlet for it and we've found that balance training is an amazingly simple accessible and powerful outlet for play um, mostly because of how scalable it is. So you could have two people playing the same game with each other, or even if it was just a solo game playing by yourself, you can very easily change your stance to suit your current abilities. And so, you know, if you needed to just stand with two feet together or even two feet apart <clears throat> as a really easy balance challenge, and then you can gradually go to narrower and splitting the base of support or going into a single leg and so on. Of course, we're also really big fans of balance training for its ability to improve foot function. Obviously, our feet as our foundation for balance. When we train our balance, we also train our feet in a very important way. It improves your overall body awareness and coordination and also your ability to learn and to focus, all of which goes a long way towards improving your capacity to engage in other activities that are fun or meaningful to you. So that could be playing with your kids or your grandkids or going out for a hike with friends, playing some ping pong, whatever it is that you like to do, having better balance, better coordination, better body awareness, better focus will help you do those things for longer and will actually also minimize your risk of injury along the way. And of course, down the line, minimize your risk of having a fall, which is actually a serious, quite a serious public health issue. And many people, um, unfortunately, are killed or disabled by having a fall in their later years. So balance training is a really, really powerful method to help all of that. And you can use it as well very easily to connect. And in terms of maximizing the connection between people um, or between you and a friend or a partner as you're balance training, there's a few ways you can do that. Obviously, playing a game that is either collaborative or competitive can be really good. Sometimes it's best to start collaborative so it's more lighthearted and you're just working together to achieve a common goal. But competition actually is a really cool way to bring out the best performance from both of you um, as long as it you know 
It can also be very lighthearted, but you start to care a little bit more about the outcome, which just makes you more focused and more attentive to what you're doing. Getting eye contact is a really important thing as well. We've found that finding ways to maintain eye contact while you're playing is a really great thing for connection. There's even people who do eye gazing sort of workshops and ceremonies, um, but you can get a lot of the same benefits just from looking at someone in the eye while you're playing a game. Um, and it is, it's, these days it feels a little bit less comfortable. People aren't as used to providing um, or giving eye contact on contact to each other so sort of forcing yourself or pulling someone else up if they've lost their eye contact is a fun way to get more of that connection um, and just keeping the whole atmosphere playful light and playful um, smiles and laughter are usually a good sign that you're keeping it playful even if you're getting competitive um, if you're you know fully serious and like zoned in it's probably more <laughs> it's less playful less light and you're probably more in that um, sort of sports competition mode. Uh, nothing wrong with that, but in general for creating more connection, keeping it lighthearted and not getting too attached to the outcome is really important. Okay, so we'll go through a couple of games to demonstrate all of that in action. Um, there are full explanations of the rules of these games in our Soulmate Partner Play videos, um, but this is just gonna show you how you can go from collaborative to competitive and how to adjust the stance and the difficulty as you go. So. This one's Mate in the Mirror, and the one we have uh, explanations for is a competitive game, but you can make it collaborative by just, you can either touch, that would be easier because touching kind of gives you a little bit of that extra stability, or you could just be in front like this. Now we're gonna try and keep that in front while remaining, or while keeping our eye contact as well. So Seb's gonna look at me in the eyes, and then I would be a follower, uh, I'd be a leader rather, Seb's the follower and he's gonna try and just keep his finger where my finger is without taking his eyes off me. And then my job is not to throw him off, but rather just to explore his limits. <laughs> and then, so, okay, well, that's a little bit of a limit there, so I won't go as far. So I actually want him to stay balanced. And you might just set a time for how long you go and then you could swap legs or um, swap feet, and then the, or swap stance rather. The main thing with mate in the mirror is you both either wanna be on one leg or on two legs, otherwise it gets a little bit confusing. The competitive version of this is where, well let's say Seb and I are both um, playing and I'm a bit better than Seb, so Seb would just go, a wider stance and I would go a narrower stance. So we could play the exact same thing, mate in the mirror, this time Seb's following me but I'm trying to throw him off. So, and I can use both hands, I'm trying to reach over here. So you can see I'm having a harder time balancing here than Seb just simply because of his wider stance which kind of evens it up. But if I was just losing every point, I kept falling, 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 and I was never scoring a point, then I'd say, look, you probably need to change your stance to go a little narrower. So you get the idea there, you want it to be a relatively even playing field so that it's fun for both of you and challenging for both of you. Um, but again, you wanna keep it lighthearted. Even if it's competitive, don't get too attached to the outcome, but it doesn't feel good if you're just constantly losing and losing and losing. So. That's an example of how you can collaborate and compete with quite a similar concept of a game. The next one is a bit more of an advanced game um, and we'll just show you on a small scale here is a soulmate sprint. So um, we'll show the, com the collaborative version first. So you could use a hacky or some kind of ball or something that you can pass or throw to each other. And so in order to move forward, we're trying to move towards the rope. In order to move forward, I have to throw or pass the hacky to Seb. Then I would put my thing forward, grab this one, put that forward, and then Seb can move when he passes over the hacky. So we're trying to work together Yeah. 
Nice. So you can only move your half when you don't have the hacky. And you know, you're just trying to, you could set a timer and you're trying to get to the end point as soon as possible. Now, with the soulmate sprint, if you touch down, then you have to go back one step. So this would have to go to here. A competitive version of that is where we're just racing each other. And that would look like this. We'll have a little race. Starting on the same line. Three, two, one, go. So this adds that element of really needing to speed up, which then makes it more likely to make a mistake and just increases your need to focus. <laughs> and then, of course, you could also do a collaborative competitive game where Seb and I might be on a team and we're versing another team of two that are doing the hacky passes in between. So you get the idea there. The options are really limitless when it comes to rules that you can make, but you want it to be a fairly even playing field. You can change your stance as needed to do that. Um, and you can obviously pick games that suit your current ability. Um, but also, yeah, explore your limits. And that can either be through competition or collaboration. Keep it fun, keep it playful, and enjoy.